Do you have a REST API that you wish was easier to connect to other services? Zapier is a service providing the glue you've been looking for, letting you connect any of 5,000 supported applications together through a simple UI. Zapier handles all the API calls, authentication, hosting, and error handling in the background, so setting up these connections really is no code. Zapier is all about easily automating processes that are better done by a machine. Create Trello cards from new GitHub pull requests, easy. Share content across social media, done. Zapier has thousands of apps, which are custom API integrations that developers coded up and published onto the Zapier platform. The good news is that as a developer, you too can create your own Zapier integration using your favorite API. The possibilities are endless. In the rest of the video, we'll cover the main steps to create such an integration. Zaps are Zapier's replacement for the frustrating process developers know as API integration. Oh, hi, it's Amateur Tom here. I'm sorry about that. Just the other Tom wasn't really explaining Zaps very well. They're basically a kind of pipeline to help you automate an entire process. The best way to learn about them is to create one and I'll jump in and explain things along the way. Professional Tom, can you create a Zap for them, please? So let's create a Zap will automate a very important process to search Reddit for any new parrot-themed posts and send them directly to me via Gmail. First, configure the trigger. That's an event which will cause this app to execute. Pick an app, choose an event, aka API call, which Zapier will intermittently poll. Choose an account, which triggers an authentication flow to log into the service. Now let's test the trigger which brings back a few sample Reddit posts to work with. We'll pick this one, which looks interesting. The next step in creating a Zap is to create an action. This uses data from the trigger and interacts with another app in some way. Set up the app, event and authentication like before. Now it's the fun bit. Fill in the details of the email. We can either hard code it or use data from the Reddit post trigger, which shows the sample data we picked earlier. Test the Zap which triggers an email to my inbox based on the sample Reddit post. Amazing stuff. Finally, give the zap a name and publish it. Now I'll sit back, relax, wait for my inbox to fill with beautiful birds. Oh, as you've seen, zaps are pretty straightforward. You create them using apps, which are a way of interacting with a specific service. If you want to use your own service within a zap, that's when you need to create an integration. This is a code package which you upload to Zapier, and once it's there, you'll have a new app available to use within your Zap. Do you want to see how it works? Professional Tom, can you show them how to create an integration, please? Yeah, but can you stop interrupting me? It's getting annoying. Okay. The Zapier team, they offer two options, a web interface setup for simpler APIs, or a pure code setup for more complex integrations. For developers, I recommend the code-based approach so you can use familiar tools like version control, testing, and your favorite IDE. But actually, even if you start creating an integration in the UI, you can later convert it to code using the Zapier CLI. This can be a good way to get started, and in fact, is exactly what I did. You see, whenever I receive a payment from Stripe, I want to automate bill creation in my bookkeeping software. I decided to create my own integration. The bookkeeping software FreeAgent has a nice JSON REST API to create bills and uses OAuth2 authentication. In the developer portal, start a Zapier integration, add some basic info, and hit create. Now set up authentication. I'll choose OAuth2, which is a kind of handshake to connect two services together. Set up the required fields, then try it out which forwards you to the API's OAuth endpoint to log in and approve. Next, create an action, which will actually create the bill through the API. 
This involves configuring the form that will be shown in the Zapier UI whenever someone uses this integration within a Zap. In the API tab, we set up the API details and Zapier attempts to create a request body based on the form. This might not work, so provide some sample data to test out the request. If it fails, you can switch to code mode and format the JSON request. That works, but now that we're writing code, I'd rather switch to a proper development environment. Fortunately, Zapier makes converting this integration into a local Node.js application really easy. Just install the Zapier command line, then run convert and open the project. You can now work on this just like any other Node.js application. Within the implementation, you can of course add any custom logic or add new triggers and actions as required. The convert command even generated an API test case. By default, this hits the real URL, so I prefer to mock the response using the NOC framework. Once you're done, run npm install, Zapier validate, then Zapier push to deploy. He's done it again, trying to sound all smooth and not explaining things properly. Anyway, what you've just seen is an example integration. Obviously, you need to replace everything with details of your own API, like authentication details and how the request body looks. But the cool thing now that we've pushed the integration to Zapier is that it's available as an app to use within our own Zaps. Let's give it a go. Back to you, professional Tom. Just go away. <laughs> Create a zap, skipping the trigger setup you saw earlier, and jumping straight to the action. Here we can select the new integration with version 101, select the event, and run through the authentication flow. Now we configure values for the fields we set up earlier. I'll just enter some test data, but normally you'll also use data from a trigger, for example transaction data from Stripe or PayPal. Test the action and it shows the success response. Double checking on the free agent side shows that the bill was created all using our Zapier integration. Once you're happy everything is working, you can leave the integration private and use it only in your own Zaps or follow Zapier's launch steps to publish it, ready for anyone else to use in new and interesting ways you probably never imagined. Does Zapier sound interesting to you? Is there an integration you'd like to create? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Shh. <laughs>